Hey everybody, Danny Ward here. Thanks for joining us. This week, I want to introduce you to the difference between chipping versus pitching. What's the difference in the technique used for chipping versus pitching? What are the common flaws I see when people are chipping around the green? And what do they find difficult? And the common mistakes I see when people are pitching, which is a little bit further away. So I'm going to discuss all of that in this week's training. Before we do, if you're new to the channel and this is one of your first videos, I would love for you to be a subscriber. I release content like this every single week to try and help you improve your game. So what is chipping? What is pitching? It's very, very straightforward. A chip shot spends most of its time rolling along the ground. So a chip shot is something very much similar to this. We're simply chipping over a small bit of rough ground. We're letting it release to the hole. And as you can see, it spends most of its time rolling towards the flag. So a pitch shot will spend most of its time floating up in the air and landing much softer. So that's when we're further away from the green and we want the ball to stop much, much quicker. So I'm going to discuss both techniques for you in this week's training. Now, Pete Cowan, a really, really great coach, I think summed up the act chipping and pitching action far better than I could. So I'm just going to kind of uh, repeat something that he, he basically said. And um, it was the difference between chipping and pitching often comes down to how you used the wrists. In the wrist action, there is an up cock and a down cock, and you can move the wrist backwards and forwards. You could roll it, but we don't want any roll at all in the, the chipping action. But we want a, but there could be an upward cock, a downward cock, and a backward hinge, and a forward hinge of the wrist. With chipping and the basic chip shot where we want the ball to be releasing out, all we have is a backward hinge and a forward hinge. Looking something like this. It goes back here and then forward, back, forward, back, forward. That's all chipping is. It's not really this, it's not backward and forward in a flicking action, but it's certainly just a backward hinge and a forward hinge. So we've got to somehow introduce that into the chipping action in a very, very simple way. So before we do that, we're gonna to have to get into a decent setup position. Now, setup and chipping, again, is very straightforward. It does depend on what you're trying to do with the golf ball, but most of the time we're trying to let the ball roll out nicely to the, to the hole. So in, in the setup position, we want the ball back in our stance for fairly low shots. If we want the ball maybe not running as far, we might move the ball a bit further forward, so we want it elevated a little bit more. I've got a uh, eight iron here. Um, I chose an eight iron because I want the ball rolling. I don't, if I chose like a sandwich or a pitching wedge, again, that would defeat sometimes the object of chipping. I want the ball releasing out. So I've chosen a club that's gonna, with a flatter face, that's gonna push that ball forward. The next thing we do is we get the width of the stance. The stance is about a club and a half width apart. We get the arms hanging down to the bottom of the grip here and we get the shaft nice and vertical. So have a look at this here. So when I'm getting self set up here, I want the shaft fairly vertical, almost to the point at which the heel comes off the ground. Now, the reason why we do this is because we want the club almost acting like a pendulum. The more it acts like a pendulum, the straighter and more accurate we're gonna be when we're chipping. If we have a lot of angle this way, the club works too far around and it's offline more than it's online, so again, it makes more things more difficult. We need that in the full swing because we need to get more rotation and power, but for shots like this, we don't need power, so we may as well get maximum control. So let's just summarize those basics there for a second. So we've moved the ball back in our stance because we want a, a shot that's rolling out. We've grip down the golf club here to the bottom part of the grip. We've taken the stands, which is about a club and a half width apart. One final ingredient, which we often miss, is this. This lead shoulder here, make sure it's down. Drop it down. Do not let that left shoulder come up here. So common when people are chipping. Left shoulder goes high, body goes back, and they end up in this type of impact position, causing fats and thin shots. So drop that left shoulder as you're doing it. The other thing here is, is notice my shaft here. My shaft is fairly neutral. It's not angled forward here. Some common things you may have heard in the past is move the ball back, push the hands forward, weight forward. All of that can work. What we've just found is, is that the margin of error is much, much smaller. Whenever you get lots of shaft lean in your setup with chipping, you basically show the leading edge to the ground. There's two parts of this golf club. You've got the leading edge here and the back edge. Once you start to get more of this in position here, you better make sure you strike that ball first because if you don't, that leading edge here is gonna cut into the ground and fat it. The great thing about getting more sh 
uh, reducing that shaft lean here is suddenly the back end, which we call the bounce, if that hits the ground slightly behind the golf ball, it doesn't matter so much. It will just glide, glide through the ball and you'll still chip it. So the margin of error is much, much greater. So get that leading, uh, sorry, the shaft lean much, much less at the start of the swing. Now going into the setup, um, sorry, into the actual swing itself, very, very straightforward here. All I'm aiming to do with chipping is just to get the ball onto the front, uh, front part of the green and let it release out. How am I doing this? I'm just doing it with a backward hinge and a forward hinge here. So it's backward, forward. Let's have a look at this in action. So all I'm going to do here is a backward hinge to the right hand and let it just release through. Nothing more complicated than that. And it just pops up and you can see it's rolling out. It's got a chance of potentially going into the hole. There's nothing. It's very, very straightforward, isn't it? But is it? Let me go through some of the problems I find when people are chipping. St step one, they've been told that they're, um, maybe by a coach, that they are flicking like this. And what I'm actually asking you to do here may feel like it's almost flicking a little bit. And you've been told to keep those wrists firm, hands ahead, etc., etc. The problem is, the more you resist the natural flow of the golf club, the more the flick comes in. So let me explain. The more you try and keep those hands ahead, it's unnatural for them to be there. The hands get way ahead of the, the ball here. They don't like it. The, the body thinks I should have hit the golf ball by now, violently flicks it at the end. What we want to do is we want a very natural, gentle, in a sense, I suppose, flick of the wrists. We're literally allowing the club here to release through. So watch this. As I kind of hinge back here, I'm not doing this, but what I am doing is unhinging. Look, notice the handle. Look how the handle stays very close to me here. It's a backward hinge and a forward hinge. So I'm releasing the club and I'm also releasing the bounce. Let's have a look at this. So backward hinge here and then forward hinge. Yeah? Let's have another look at that one. Backward hinge, forward hinge. Backward, forward. I can strike the ground comfortably a centimetre behind the ball and still be absolutely fine with chipping. It still gets that ball releasing nicely. So with chipping, keep it really, really straightforward. Get into your setup position, take a club that's going to get that ball rolling out to the hole and then from there get the backward hinge and the forward hinge. Let's now look at pitching. Some nice stopping shots. So here's pitching. Pitching, I brought you to a slightly awkward shot. You can see it here, not a lot of green to work with, lots of rough ground to go over, and we want to land the ball and stop it reasonably quickly. So the very first thing we do is we move to a 56. Before I get into this, I actually missed a little secret for developing your chipping in the first section. I'm going to share with you that little secret at the end of this pitching segment. So keep watching. You won't want to miss it. It's really simple, but it work, really, really works. So, pitching, we've used a 56 degree wedge. What do we do? And is there any difference in the mechanics? Yes, there is. Very little difference in the setup. We may widen the stance just a fraction. You maybe want to move the ball a bit for the forward in your stance here, closer to your lead foot, more central. We don't want to necessarily have it back in a stance because we're trying to get the ball stopping. So, we want loft. So, by pushing it forward and using a more lofty club, we get that element. Everything else pretty much remains the same. The difference now in the mechanics of what happens is there's some changes. So we said with chipping, it's more of a backward hinge and a forward hinge. With pitching, we start to use much more of a cocking, up cock and a down cock of the wrists. So as we do this, chipping would have been like this, back, back hinge, forward hinge. Pitching now, what we're going to do is this. We're going to start to get the wrist cocking much, much more upwards. Reason we want more club head speed, we want the, uh, the bounce to be activated a bit more, and we want that ball popping up there. So we're going to add a cocking of the wrists. The second thing we need to do, once you've got the feeling of the cocking here, okay, we've got to understand that a lot of people here, when they do uh, uh, start to use their wrists, they tend to work around. It's a big mistake here. So the cocking of the wrists, what can you look out for? I imagine the club is almost feeling like it's going vertically upwards. If you kept this going here, 
uh, really vertical for, for a longer shot here. The butt of the club here would point between your ball line and your foot line. That's the key. We don't want too much of this. So you can see where that butt points now, it's pointing over there. So that's the checkpoint of the cocking of the wrists. From then on, what we want to do is understand what we're supposed to do through the impact area. When you're cocking the wrist here, okay, what we want to then do is this. We want to let the club now fall, the gravity of the club fall back underneath us here, not drive the handle. A lot of people, because of maybe traditional coaching, like we said earlier, getting the hands ahead, etc., they get the club up in position and then simply drive forward in an attempt to strike the golf ball. This leads to a couple of things. One, you may get a strike and it'd be okay, but the ball goes, flies up quite low. But what tends to happen is, is the leading edge again gets stuck into the ground. You might fat it. The hands are so far ahead of the golf ball at this stage for a pitch shot. Your body reacts and fires and you get this horrible flick. Yep. That's what kills the thins. What we said, and the same with chipping is what we want to do, and it feels very strange, is from here, I want to let you, from this position here, once you've cocked the wrists, I want you to imagine that you're going to start to learn to square the face. So the, the face doesn't work this way, it stays open. Watch this, I'm going to turn the face back towards the golf ball, so the grip end basically comes right in the center of me. I am not allowing that grip to come here. Once it's cocked here, I'm going to simply turn the club back to where it started. It's nothing more complicated than this. Watch this. If I've cocked the wrists here, what am I going to do? I'm going to uncock them in exactly the same way they cocked. I'm not going to go and drive. And that's what a lot of people do. So it's an up cock and a simple down cock is exactly what you've just how you just started. Let's have a look at this in action. So I go down the grip, exactly the same thing. I'm going to cock my wrists in play and then simply allow them to release. Let's have a look at this. So cock and release. Not too bad, I'll do for now. Okay, so one more time with this. So get myself set, cock here, and then just release through. So nice little set here, and then I think I'm gonna do a stop start for you. So I'm gonna cock the wrist here, and then I'm gonna simply turn the club back into impact here. Down the grip a little bit more actually for this short one. Cock the wrist here, and then from here, just turn and through. Let me show you, just chipping sideways so you can see what it looks like from this angle. So from here, all I'm doing is I'm cocking the wrist here and I'm turning the club back around into this position here. So it's this gentle cock here and then just turn around, get the club turning back to square and allow it to fall underneath me here as I turn through the shot. And that, is basically pitching, okay? It requires practice, of course it does. Common flaws, as I said, people get to here and what they do is, is their handle, things to watch out for on, cam uh, on camera, they drive the handle way past their legs, that's not what we're after. Once you've set those wrists in play, you turn this club back to square so the handle sits more in line and you continue rotating through the shot. Now, let's just summarize. What did I say I promise you? I promise you a something special, which I, it's a simple grip change that you can make to your chip shots to improve the feel of this in, uh, exact motion. So, less so for pitching, but you can use it for pitching, but this is more of a, a chipping grip. So, what you can do, if those of you who get a bit anxious around the greens, get a bit uh, tight, some of the top players actually use this out on the golf course. So, what you want to do is take the back two fingers of your top hand off the club, take your little finger off the club and it'll feel very strange because you won't feel like you've got any hold over the golf club whatsoever, which is the idea. Because then what you do, you're allowed to use the head. You'll feel the balance of the head of the golf club doing the work for you. If you hold on to it, then you grab and you start using the grip and driving the grip, etc. So take the back two off, little finger of your bottom hand off the club and just let the head go. Now I'm gonna, this is just for basic chipping, so I'm, I'm just gonna show you a basic chip shot here. One, two, and the club now floats through, and that just works so, so well. You can, the great thing about this exercise, you can take this straight to the golf course and really get the feel of that gravity working. So let's summarize. What have we done? We, we talked about the difference between chipping and pitching. What is the difference? A chip shot spends most of the time rolling along the ground. A pitch shot spends most of the time flying in the air. How do you go about achieving it? Very differently 
for both of them. So we said you can use their, that new grip I just mentioned to you there just as a training aid, but some people take to the golf course, back two fingers off, the, off your top hand, little finger off your bottom hand to allow the club to swing more like a pendulum. How do you set up to chipping? Well, stance is about a club and a half width apart. We're gonna grip down the golf club here. We're gonna lower the lead shoulder here to level them off. We're gonna get a weight on our lead side. We're not gonna get lots of shaft lean forward. We're gonna keep the shaft fairly neutral from this angle face on. And also we're gonna get the club slightly upright here to act like a pendulum. Technically after that, we're gonna work on just the backward hinge and the forward hinge. And it looks like this, backward, forward, unhinge. So Cut, oh sorry, backward hinge, forward hinge, not backward flick. Not to, don't need much of that, it's backward, forward. One, two, one, two. Like popping it onto the green. Pitching, pretty much exactly the same setup. Just change a couple of things, get the stands a fraction wider apart, very important. Um, the pitching, you're gonna, we're gonna move now much more towards a 56 degree wedge because you want height. Move from an eight time to a 56. And then we start to add in a cocking, an up cock and a down cock of the wrists now. So as we said, we're now cocking the wrists here. Check points here, as we get longer here, the butt wants to point between the, butt, the foot line and the ball line. And then from there, we let the club head turn back towards the golf, uh, golf ball and finish where we started here. Not driving forward, we turn back to where we started. Then you activate the bounds, then you have these lovely I'm bruising um, strikes where the club, the bounce is just gliding through and popping that ball up onto the green. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Of course, if you did, please share it with somebody who could do with a bit of help with their short game. And of course, look, if this is one of your first videos and you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'd love to see you next week. But until we do, until next week, have a great golfing week.